I created a 501c3 charitable organization in the year 2000 to make it easier to make uh, contributions to certain charities. I had good advice setting it up. They have to be approved by the IRS. Uh, you approach it on the premise that uh, it's all legitimate and legal. I had good, I thought, good advisors. One particular year, I made a large contribution, $100,000 contribution to the organization in one year. And uh, that triggered an audit. But the audit did not come to my attention for three or four more years. And so they sent me a form in as much as they were unable, as they admitted, to complete the audit. It had to go forward, but in order to go forward, I had to sign this form or they would drag me into tax court. That's what the letter said. I signed the form. In effect, canceled the, the uh, 501c3 legitimacy. They voided it. So you no longer have one and you owe tax on this transaction of $65,000 plus penalty. While I was waiting to get it settled, they swept my bank account one day for $10,000 with no forewarning. And I, you know, you check your balance at the beginning of the month, you think you have some money in the bank, you don't have any money, you have a $10,000 sweep and the IRS can just come to your banker and say, well, uh, we're taking the money in the way that you went. Well, my, my feeling was I should, uh, if I could talk to somebody and explain all this, they would agree that, oh, okay, you know, that's reasonable. We'll just uh, drop the whole thing and uh, let it go. <clears throat> but it doesn't work that way. The idea that you can lose everything, they'll come and get you, is uh, for most people, the kind of stress that keeps you up late at night, you know, you can imagine every kind of scenario and when you get into it, you find out there are no defenses. All you got is a good offense. But you can't deal with somebody uh, in Chicago because you can't you know, get a one-on-one -on -one interview. The great thing about Jordan, you can walk in and step in his office and shut the door. And, and he gave me 15 or 20, he actually gave me 30 minutes to just tell me what your problem is. The clock isn't ticking. I didn't have to pay anything. And uh, then line, lined up the, uh, what the retainer issue is all about and what it means, and it was very reasonable. It's like turning on the lights. You see, well, there is a way out of this. I mean, there's a pr protocol. We do this, this, and this, and this. It was a path that you're on, a, you know, you're on a path, and there's a finish line somewhere. Otherwise, you're just like dog trotting forever. In the first meeting we had, he had my entire tax history for 15, well, like 12 years. And so you know exactly where you are. The big issue for me was to avoid getting the letters. And he can filter it through his experience about what's really going on. And now if you're just a layman, you're out there, you're getting these letters, you're not sleeping at night. After we hired Jordan, then he, uh, with this uh, power of attorney that he has, he is now in the loop on all the correspondence you get. And I got to the point where I'd, I'd call his office and I'd either talk to Jewel or himself and he'd say, well, just, you know, don't read it because we, we already got the copy. And so you, you then have this relief emotionally knowing that you have an advocate now. He knows the rules. He can't eliminate them, but he knows how to, you know, approach the solution. But there are remedies in the law that uh, do not accompany any letter you get from the IRS. They're not gonna explain the remedies and what the negotiable issues might be, but Jordan will. Plus he has a personal relationship with the IRS people. I don't even know the person. If that, the IRS guy who's working on my stuff walks through that door, I never met him, I don't know even know his name. Jordan talks to him one-on-one. -on -one. 